Welcome to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Being your own loud is not new to marketing, but the mindset, strategies, and resources to help you get there are evolving faster than this industry is keeping up. It is time to find a new perspective on what works why and how to move your business forward. Listen as I interview guests to help you learn from them how to be your own loud. Let's get to the show. Hey, everybody. It's Kirk Lowe, the CEO of Proudmouth. I'm here today to get our show started. This is another version of Top Advisor Marketing, another version, another episode. And today, Matt and I are going to chat about when to say yes or no to outsourcing your podcast. And I'm going to be doing the interview. So hold on, everybody. (laughs) Let's get started here, Matt. This, by the way, this is our second take of the intro, but we're not going (laughs) to let this one go because I can't do a third take. It's just embarrassing. Anyway, Matt, we're going to, I'm going to pick Matt's brain today. Obviously we've got an outline as you guys know, but we're going to talk about, but who knows where it's going to go. Matt, why don't you tell us your experience, kind of like why you wanted to do this episode and have somebody as amazing as me uh, ask you all these questions. Well, I don't think there's anybody better to ask me these questions than you, since uh, you were one of the ones uh, besides me who nerd out on the research on all of this stuff. But I think the big thing is we just wanted to encapsulate a great way for people to realize if they should outsource. What what are the key things that they need to have and take into consideration if they want to use podcasting as their major form of media and content creation? really if they should outsource it or if they should insource it because there are people who absolutely have the capacity to insource this who wouldn't need to use us at all but really should be podcasting absolutely and we know that uh, podcasting has taken off over the uh, covid downtime Uh, a lot more people took to listening to podcasts we're seeing an uptick in people wanting to start podcasts as well Mm -hmm. you know this is becoming more and more popular it's definitely not a fad as the as the uh, trends would suggest, suggest. We're seeing a lot of success with it and lots of room for areas for improvement and, and expectations. And that's part of the conversation here today as well yeah. is to help you guys understand and answer some of these questions. So, so of the four things that you need to decide before you either outsource a podcast or insource it, when we get started with, with the big one, which is, do I have time? This is a consideration I think everybody needs to make when it comes to content creation across the board. And Kirk, this is one of the main reasons why people use some of our friends in marketing who have their own pre built out content marketing plans because advisors really take a look at it and say to themselves, Matt, I just don't have time. So let's talk about what you need to do to put into it. If if you're not going to outsource and then we can talk about what, what is that? Okay. Do you want to start with Yeah. What's interesting about what you just said about content marketing is that more and more advisors understand that marketing is content marketing and they need to do it. The question is, is do one of the questions that you just mentioned is, do I buy into a canned pre-done content system? Yep. Or do I create my own content? Maybe before you can talk about the difference between when you decide you want to create content, because if if you're, if you don't need content, you you just don't have the time and and you want to go the pre-content or or already done content route. That's a mindset. Yeah. But if you decide, Hey, I want my own organic content. I want to be known as the expert and the authority. And I want to build this influence over time, which is a way different outcome than, than the other track. What, what's that mindset? What's kind of involved in that mindset? Like how do they get there? And what does that mean? Well, I love what you just said, and I hope everybody paid very close attention to that because if I think advisors have no longer do we have to convince them that content marketing is the only marketing left. I think everybody's finally figured that over the last probably the last five years. The the big question is, is do you want to create your own content or do you want to use other people's content? And there's huge benefits and draws back drawbacks to each of those. And so I'll briefly go over a couple of those. Number one, time. That's the first thing that you have to consider if you're going to be outsourcing your podcasting or insourcing, but it also matters if you're going to outsource your content or insource. So here's the thing. 
You can hire a company and they will create targeted lead funnels for you based off of content. One of that I use all the time is Roth conversions, right? So I know that there's a, a couple of friends of ours, uh, Snappy Kraken happens to be one, uh, advisor, there's all sorts of organizations that offer these things that are out there. And so you go on the Roth conversion track and they have all of these different sorts of pieces, parts that people click on so that they warm them up more and more. And that works really well. But, th but the problem is, and this is one of the cost benefit analysis that everybody has to make a decision on, is that isn't preferred from an SEO perspective is Google and all of the search engines know, email campaign people know, spam filters know that you are utilizing somebody else's content. And you also have to make sure that it's in line with you philosophically. And if it is great, use it. If it's not, you might want to put your own spin on it. So that's really why you would use a, a canned marketing technique. Now let's talk about creating your own content and I'll try to do this quickly. The easiest way to do this is to every time a client asks you a question that you know that you have answered many times in the past, you put it on a list and that becomes your content creation tool. And you can utilize this during any client meeting. So this pre pre um, presupposes that you're going to be creating your own content. But if you're going to write your own content, blog your own content, video your own content, or you're going to podcast your own content, you also have to look at the time that it not only takes to create the content, but also all of the post-production time. And Kirk, I just, I think it's super important to cover those four things. So if you're just going to be writing social media posts for every social media post based off the content that you create, you need to look at about 30 minutes. It's going to take about 30 minutes to write that content, edit it, make sure the links are good. It goes through compliance, all of that stuff. If you're going to yeah, do if, if you know what you're doing, right? Well, absolutely. Right, right, yeah. right. So you have your hashtag games got to be strong, your keyword searches, your backlinks, all of those things that a lot of people don't know about. Then the second thing, let's say you're going to blog, right? So there's still a lot of advisors who blog. You're talking two to three hours per blog, and that's just for the writing time. That's not for compliance and post-production. So you're really looking at for every blog, you're looking at about five hours of time from inception of the idea to completion and post that blog on your site, WordPress, or on social media. Yeah, I think for the people who get it done in two or three hours, they're they've been doing it for a couple of years. Yeah, to be honest, they're you yeah. and before that, it's like more like the four to six hours yeah. just to get the post the article done. Yeah. All right, yep. video. So let's talk about video yep. real quick. So for every minute of video that you do, unless you're just going to do it wicked raw, you're looking at 15 to 30 minutes of editing time post production. Most of your videos are three to five minutes. So think about that, right? Also, you also have to practice the script. So you're looking at a good hour prep time for that three to five minute video. So you have the script memorized, you know where you're pausing, breathing, sneezing, coughing, all of the things that you do in video. And then you have to edit the video at the end, upload it to YouTube and whatever you want to do. Subtitles generally are very important to be diverse and inclusive. All right. Now you talk about podcasting. So if you want to do your own podcasting, the amount of time that it takes to do a show is going to be three to four hours per show. All right. So what that means is you have to come up with the topic. You have to outline the topic. You have to record the podcast. You have to do all of your warm up stuff, which we don't even need to go into that today. If you're getting your guest, you have to get all of the stuff in line for the guest. And then you have to send it into post production. Now, if you use us or if you use a, a company like Fiverr, which is an amazing organization and a company or Upwork, uh, you can outsource the editing of your podcast. There's a cost involved with that. But if you're going to do it yourself for every 30 minute show, you need to allocate about two hours because most of you aren't very good at this. You need to learn the software. Even when you get to know the software, a 30 minute podcast, taking out the spaces, the pauses, the mess ups, mastering it, all of that stuff. And then you have to figure out what you're gonna do with the show afterwards, because podcasting is a little different than video, because video, basically you're gonna upload to video, Vimeo, YouTube, or your website. Podcasting, there's some syndication things. So did, did I answer those about doing yourself, Kirk? Did I miss anything? <laughs> you, know, you answer those wonderfully, man. There's a lot of lot for our listeners to to process there what i'm thinking is when you get to understanding all the things that need to get done and, and you're thinking about outsourcing i'm wondering if you know where people are as far as if, whether or not they can afford it that this cost benefit analysis that we all do as good business owners mm -hmm. is what's the the opportunity with podcasting if i do it on my own do i have enough time to fit it in 
is it going to move the needle the way I want it to, or should I outsource it? And if I outsource it, is it going to move the needle? Is it going to be right mixture of, of my authenticity, things like that. So can you tell us a little bit more about knowing how much time and what are the options? Um, sure. What, what should I expect to pay for this? Whether I guess one, I'm doing this on my own Two, I'm outsourcing parts of it or three, I'm outsourcing the whole darn thing or as much as you can outsource. Regardless of whatever social media content or content creation that you're doing, you are going to want to have some checks and balances in place. So if you're a blogger, you need to send it to an editor. If you're going to be outsourcing video, you need to generally outsource the editing of that video. And, and let's just talk about podcasting, which is which is really our wheelhouse, not even taking into account all of the content that we create based off of your podcast, all of the social media posts that we build for our clients. But if you're going to out, if you're going to do it in house and then do it yourself, that's three to four hours. So take a pencil and write down on a piece of paper how much your time is worth. The average advisor generally bills themselves out at anywhere from 150 to 250 dollars an hour. So let's just middle of the road that and say it's two hours. I'm sorry, 200 dollars, three to four hours. So you're looking at six to eight hundred dollars of your time per podcast. Is that is that fair? Yep. Okay. If you partially outsource it, which you can cut that time in half because of that's all of the editing time, it's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks to edit your show, edit, master, put the intro and outro on it. That's generally a high quality person who's going to have your podcast volume be consistent. You're looking at a couple hundred bucks there. Or if you use us, you're looking at roughly five to 600 bucks a show all in for us to do all of the stuff, including the podcast description, infusing it with hashtags, keywords, writing the summary and syndicating it to all the major players. Yeah. And I think you're just to, just to be clear, the, the 500 is if you're bundling it and the 600 is if it's just yeah. straight yeah. up, right? Yeah. I mean, there, there's some good benchmarks there for everybody to understand what the, what the cost is. I know that one of the things that's interesting about if you do want to outsource your podcast, can you talk a little bit about the types of outsourced podcast companies? Because we've experienced very specific types of podcast production firms. Can you sure. speak to that a little bit? Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, the first thing you always have to ask anybody who you're going to outsource your podcast to in our industry is do they understand compliance? That I cannot stress that enough. In fact, Kirk, I think I might have shared this with you offline, but I had a meeting with an advisor who's part of this very large coaching group that's not a financial services coaching group, but it's a it's a large coaching group. And in their little mastermind group or whatever they call them, there was a podcast production company and they're like, look, we want to get into financial services. We're going to not only produce your video, but we're produce your audio. And it was a really ridiculous price, which means that I, I don't even know how they got to that price point. And so I'm talking to the advisor and I'm like, okay, so how, how do you file this for compliance? And he's like, well, what, what are you talking about? I just give compliance the MP3. And it's like, they're not going to listen to your 40 minute podcast, dude. They're not going to take notes on everything. That's not how the game works. I said, you, you have to transcribe it, have the transcription scrubbed. So it's readable. And he's like, oh my God, I've done 10 of these and we have no transcripts. I'm like, they're just, that made me really nervous. There's one thing that you have to make sure is that they understand compliance. And two, that they understand the jargon in the industry, because if they are editing your show with a lot of the acronyms that we use, if they don't understand the content, they're not going to be able to write you a great summary or a great description of the show, infuse it with hashtags or any of those things, because it's a language that they don't understand. But there are podcasting companies out there, everybody. You're looking at, I've seen it as inexpensive as $99 an episode to as expensive as 15 1500 an episode and that's where you're getting into like npr quality they bring in b-roll audio so that you know you've got sound effects and car noises and crap like that but if you want to spend the 1500 per there are definitely companies out there that'll do that i can see some of our listeners being a little bit overwhelmed and we're only what 10 minutes into this <laughs> i'm sorry dude yeah no it's it's the reality and i think that's why we've had a successful business helping people take this off their plates. So they don't have to think about it. Yeah. And it's why there's lots of, you know, podcast companies showing up. One of the things that we've talked about before, I, I wanted to tee up this question by just saying that we we've experienced 
a certain type of experience, the skill set that mm. typically runs podcast production companies and how different and unique, how, you know, our yeah. experience and skill set is when we got into this compared to others. Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, I am so grateful that you and I partnered on this every single solitary day because of all of the stuff that we've built in, not only just through the co-hosting interview style technique that we have, but all the branding and marketing experience that you brought to the table with Tacta Brand for 20 years that you guys branded financial services professionals and helped them market. You have to keep those in mind. There's huge graphic design elements that you have to understand. You have to understand language, how social media works, how you're going to take your podcast and turn it into other pieces of content. Because here's the thing, everybody, if you're blogging, you still need to cut that blog up and turn it into regular social media posts. If you're shooting video, if you're doing regular social media, it's all about volume of ever present and omnipresent content creation and Kirk and I figured out a couple years ago that there's 11 different disciplines that you need to have to create ideal content. And I'm not going to go over all of them. I just hit a couple of them, graphic design, professional writers, SEO experts, people who have specific training in social media. You've got to have the post-production, pre-production, all of the hosting that happens, the coaching that goes involved with making sure you're going to be great behind the microphone for us. But I think that really outlines the time thing. If you just you're, hit seven. You just uh, hit yeah. seven of the yeah. 11. Well, so, I'm not going to list them, but. Well, what did I miss anyone that you, we really should bring up? Oh, now you put me back on the spot. How <laughs> totally you, is that how that. you get even with me for, for teasing you on that? A little bit. Okay, so let's just move on from that, though. Hold on. Well, there's audio, audio editing. There's just understanding how to put together a podcast. There's having somebody who can host it or co-host it. Mm -hmm. How to syndicate it. I mean, all of the syndication. Just cool general yeah. branding and marketing. There's promotion. How do you, how are you going to get more listens? Yeah. Uh, understanding podcast business. So channels and how you, how you syndicate your podcast. What are the rules around syndication? There are a lot of things that you have to take into consideration when when you ask yourself, do I have the time to create my own content? And, and the answer is you do just do a cost benefit analysis. on if you want to have the control over it or do you want to be able to outsource it to somebody who's done this for a living right in our space? Because that that's really who we are. If you if you're really OK with spending eight hundred dollars of your own time per episode, then do it yourself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you don't value your time at $200 an hour and you're like, well, I've got all the time in the world, then you're absolutely right. I would love to have a conversation with you on, on helping you launch and learn all of that stuff. Yeah. But that really gets to the next point. So Kirk, let's move on to the next one. Well, no, I, actually, I, I want to ask you, you I, hey, who's, inter, who's, who's, who's the interviewer here? <laughs> Holy jump. So, so listen, I, I'm thinking as I, as you, you just went through a lot of stuff there. I wasn't expecting you to go through that much stuff, but you're on a roll. I'm I'm curious if anybody's thinking, or maybe they should be thinking, can can I afford not to do this? Not to figure out, can I afford not to figure out how to make my content, my authentic content marketing as efficient as possible so that I can keep growing my business and creating momentum in my marketing? I, I just, I don't think that anybody, I don't think you can afford not to do this anymore, everybody. It's you have to find a very efficient way to distill your voice, your unique ability in a way that's going to communicate your message to your ideal client and prospect. That's that is the world that we live in. Do you wish you could release consistent podcast episodes without sacrificing your work life balance? As an advisor, you're passionate about sharing your knowledge. Creating a consistent stream of valuable podcast content is time consuming. And that's why we've created the Proud Bell Pod Blast Collection, your shortcut to amazing content. Now, each Pod Blast pack is like having a team of expert writers and marketers supporting you and your podcast without the extra overhead. With the Pod Blast packs, you're going to get everything you need for a complete episode. Engaging titles, intro, social media posts, promo email, even a customizable blog to reach more people all ready to go with just a few tweaks and all written with compliance in mind. Take back your time and produce a consistent podcast you're proud of. Visit the Proudmouth Pod Blast Collection store today at podblast.proudmouth.com. 
every one of you who's listening to this knows that when you had that key hire of that number two or that assistant or you have better financial planning software, better CRMs, when you invest back into your business, everything changes. But very few of you invest what you're supposed to, which is 10% of gross not net into your marketing. 10% of gross. So if you are a $200,000 producer, Kirk, how much money is that? 20,000 boss. Right, $20,000, right? And nobody is spending $20,000. Yeah, you know why I'm CEO. <laughs> That's Look at right. that you're math. the number, yeah. That tough you're, math that, I pulled I know. out quick. That was, that was beautiful. <laughs> if you are a $100,000 person, you need to spend $10,000. If you make a million dollars, you should be spending $100,000 on marketing. And when you go to conferences, I'm going to leave you with this. When you go to conferences and you're all sitting there and you're looking at those people who are sitting up on the main stage and you're like, oh, my God, I want to be like them when I grow up. Every one of them is spending way more on marketing than you think they are. I'm just leaving a little silence there because it's so true. It's one of the biggest differences between people who go for it and don't is they're so committed. We talk about some of our most successful advisors don't just hire us. They do stuff on, yeah. on the side. We watch what they do. We talk, we instruct them to do some of it, some of it, they, some of them get on their own. They're already doing it. It's all good stuff. They do not set it and forget it with a podcast company. They're all over getting it out. They talk about it all the time. We originally pushed this out as organic marketing tactics for your podcast. We've, we're about we're in the process of building this into a full assessment that's going to queue up people with a checklist of priorities they need to do to take their to make their podcast sing. And we're pretty excited to launch that stuff here in the very near yeah. future. Very near future. Another decision. One of the four things. The third one that we hear a lot of. We, we can usually get people through this if we've got, if we're in contact with them, but for the people who don't allow us to get there with them or haven't listened to our podcast might not get this, but how, how do, I think a lot of people have anxiety mm. or maybe a lack of confidence around being able to come up with enough topics to, to run a podcast. So if, if we maybe you can start with by telling us what's the best prescription for the frequency of a podcast and then, and then how difficult or easy or some best practices to come up with content so that they don't have that anxiety. So the run rate that we recommend is two podcasts a month. So that's the run rate that we recommend. They give you 24 podcasts a year. And I will give you a formula right now for anybody who's going to be doing this on themselves or on themselves to have that first whole year of podcasting, ready to go. So grab a piece of paper and get ready. The first three podcasts are this. Who are you? What do you do? And what is a client experience like? We got the first three done right there. Generally, we want somebody to interview you that to pull it out of you. So it's not just you talking. We are not a fan of solo casts here. It's just not a good use of your time. And it's very hard to keep people's attention. So there's the first three. The next seven, which will get it yet to 10, is going to be whatever is on your website about frequently asked questions, which almost every one of you has. That can be a podcast right there. So now we just got to 10. We're almost halfway there. The next as long as those frequently asked questions, I guess, aren't about processes in their business. That's right. right? There, there should be about big questions that people have about their finances, yep. your ideal audience anyway. So we're at 10 now. So the yep. next two, so we're going to get you halfway there, are going to be interviewing team members. Whoever's your, your para planner, whoever's your director of operations, whoever's your director of first impressions, your assistant, you're going to interview those people. So that gets us halfway there. Now, the next six are going to be the questions that you answer every time during your onboarding process. The discovery process with a client after they become a new client after the first meeting. So that should you should be able to pull two podcasts from each of those. So that gets a six. And then the last six, Kirk, are going to be you're going to create a dream list of six people who you want to interview and get on your show, who's a center of influence or somebody that you want to have a better and deeper relationship with that just came up with 24 topics right there. It took me four minutes. Do you um, have any other resources to help advisors in particular with coming up with topics? So we got over 150 podcast topics outlined for our clients in case they're concerned that they're not going to come up with anything. And these are the ones that we know have gotten the most clicks, the most listens. We've distilled the best ideas. So we have more topics. We have topics coming out the wazoo, man. 
for for our clients. Yeah. Someday I I'm gonna look up Wazoo because I have no idea what a Wazoo is, but you talk about it a lot. <laughs> I do. There was a great commercial. It was a Super Bowl commercial where yeah. this guy's being wheeled into the ER, and they're like, "Oh my God, he's got money coming out of his Wazoo!" And there's just money shooting out from underneath the blanket, and it was like yeah. some sort of like credit card company with cash back or something. But that's that's the popularization <laughs> of Wazoo. Okay. Well, maybe I won't look up Wazoo. Then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. This is the big question, which is what kind of results do I expect from a podcast, whether you're outsourcing it or insourcing it, what should people expect? If you're insourcing it, you need to double all of these timeframes. That's just the reality of the situation. Okay, just double it. So we know that if you outsource it to somebody who has experience working with financial services, it's going to take you nine to 18 months to see an actual what you all would refer to as return on investment. So A plus B equals C, I bought podcasting, I put podcasts out, I get new clients. All right, it takes nine to 18 months. But all good marketing takes time for you to gain momentum. Most of you are just chasing the next shiny thing, then it doesn't work because you don't give it enough time and then you find the next shiny thing. Uh, and then that's just how your marketing has always been. We're, we're, we're fundamentally challenging that. So if you're gonna do it yourself, you're looking at 18 to whatever, 36 months is how long it's gonna take you if you're gonna do it yourself. But there's other components of ROI I have to talk about. Number one, client retention and greater share of wallet. If you do this correctly, you're going to retain clients longer. You're going to have a larger share of your wallet and you're going to become more referable. In fact, listen to Bill Cates podcast, the top advisor podcast. He talks about how to use not only podcasting, but also other referral tools within your existing book of business to get more and more referrals from your ideal clients. So there's one. Number two, deepening relationships with your center of influence. If you follow that template I just had, which means that you're going to have six of your greatest referral sources on your show they are going to give you access to their listenership, their audience, because you're going to ask them to share the podcast with their whole network. You are going to have a better relationship with them, be more top of mind and get more referrals from them right there. And that actually can happen very quickly. But if you're just going to follow the standard format, you're looking at nine to 18 months if you outsource and you're looking at um, 18 to 36 money monies, 36 months if you do it yourself. Yeah, I haven't been in the business, you and I, so many years working with advisors. Anytime somebody pursues what what we call a, a center of influence referral approach to to filling their pipeline or getting new opportunities, driving revenue, whatever you want to call it, there's typically amount of time from when you start trying to build those relationships before they start paying off. Is that any different when they're a guest on your podcast versus you going for a coffee or just calling up saying, hey, and what can you align some expectations around that? Because one of our more successful podcasters has almost exclusively used this podcast as a center of influence yeah. relationship building tool. Hey, be on my podcast. And maybe you can speak a little bit to the expectations there and then what it was like for that particular advisor that we've worked with. The particular advisor that you're referring to, it took him a little while to be convinced that he needed to interview other people. In fact, he was just being interviewed by our team for for a good solid year, 18 months before he implemented our guest system. And he still had relationships with all these people, Kirk. He would do the old take them out to lunch, give them a referral, all of those sorts of pieces. That's what they would do pretty regularly. But They're going to wait you out, everybody. CPAs and estate planning attorneys go to conferences just like you. And every one of those people who have successful relationships with financial advisors, one of the things that they'll say is you need to wait a year before you give them a referral. But when you bring them on the podcast, everything changes. And here's why. Because they're going to share that podcast with their network. It's a 30-minute commercial about how awesome they are as a CPA or estate planning attorney. Why wouldn't they share that with everybody? And honestly, that's a condition for them to be on the show. Did they answer your question? You just surprised me that you didn't give fill in more there. Why does it shorten the time from, so you, you get a new CPA relationship, you invite them out. What, what What's happening that's changing the dynamic of how you would normally do that? It may be obvious to some of our listeners, but maybe we're just going through that. 
for clarity. The first thing is, is everybody, podcasts are still really cool. Podcasts are still something that are, isn't really happening as much professionally. And so the yeah. fact that you have the show. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. The next one is you have a chance to interview them and ask them questions and ask them in questions to show that you understand their business and understand what makes them fundamentally unique and different. You're not going to sit uh, in a coffee shop or at lunch and just pepper the person with questions. You're going to have small talk. How's your kids? How's your family? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We don't do that on podcasts. We're going to dive right in. Then I'm going to pick your brain and pull everything out of it that I possibly can. It's just so much more focused on your professional unique ability, that professionalism that you have as one of my referral partners. And I want to focus on that wholeheartedly and then finally they are going to share it with everybody else when you go out to lunch with one of your one of your cpas they're not going to go back and say hey i had a great lunch with kirk lowe he was awesome here's all the great things that we talked about and that's not that doesn't happen but you share a podcast and they come back and say oh my god man i just got off a podcast and man kirk was asking me some great questions and hey guys i got to talk about this new product or service that we offer i want everybody to listen to it it's just a totally different feeling and conversation this is part of the beauty, beautiful parts of, of podcasting. I just asked you a question, which you're telling me I need to do to be a good interviewer, right? To listen, ask questions, which is a lesson for everybody here. And you gave a different answer than you've ever given, or you added a new dimension, which is that you get to ask a center of influence a bunch of questions that would be seem kind of odd for you to ask. You basically get to test how smart they are. So in a way you're, you could come out of that with, geez, I don't, I'm not really sure that as much of a fit as I thought, or I I can't believe they know that I now know something new that I can go back to my clients with, or, wow, I didn't realize you did that. Mm -hmm. That's what podcasting is like discovery. If you have a good, a good interviewer, which is one of the things that I love listening to, to on our podcasts because I get to, you get to see things when somebody asks a great question, enlightening a lot of the times to, to dig into somebody's mind or their experiences. Anyway, I think that's a really cool angle. You know, you're talking about results being anywhere from, I think you said nine months up to 18 months. Yep. I believe in the case where you were talking about our client who's doing a lot of center of influence relationships, uh, interviews, once they got there in their mind, because that was a strength of theirs. I think it actually results didn't start till the, after the 18 month. That, and I think yeah. it might've been closer to, yeah. 24. So between 18 and 30 months, they had yep. massive growth and success, but there was definitely anxiety along the way. We, we had yeah. some calls <laughs> and I, and I think that's another thing about having really good people in your corner when you do outsource or if you, or if you're going to insource, have somebody who can bring some perspective because really good marketing takes some time. And if you don't, if you're not willing to put the time in and stay focused on, on the, on the longer term results that'll come from good marketing, then you'll end up stopping it. Any time I've ever seen stop and start marketing, yeah. what's that like? Our ideal client is that financial advisor, right? And I know there's advisors who are sitting, but why, why, why does what Kirk just said sound so yeah, familiar? But this hasn't anything to do with whether they're a client of ours. I mean, well, no, no, but hold, we can hold help on. them with the stop part of it. In general terms, if you start and stop something because you're not willing to put the time in to see the results come, and it's a hard thing. It's a huge leap of faith to say, I'm going to spend two years on this. But it shouldn't be. And that's what I'm challenging you on because our clients, our financial advisors, who our listeners state that to their clients all the time. Hey, look, what, what I do for you takes time. We're taking the long view on a financial plan. I don't time the market. It's not timing the market. It's time in the market. All of these things that are finding, because we hear about this all the time on the podcast, right? All of our clients mm-hmm. are podcasting about this. But well, why aren't they looking at their marketing the same way, Kirk? This is what just baffles me. They say yeah. this to their clients all the time, and we're saying the exact same thing. We know that you're going to have so much more success if you stick with one thing for a while. I have to tell you a very quick story. I had a, a, a guy on the show, or I'm sorry, I had a, a, a prospect meeting last week. They had been doing radio. Okay. And he's like, Matt, we've been doing radio forever and I haven't gotten any results. I was like, well, tell me what forever is. Six months. I know people who've done radio for 12 years and they and it is a consistent lead source for them but they said when they signed up for radio they knew that it was going to be 
24 to 36 months before they had enough clout in the community. And that's one of the issues with radio versus podcasting clout in mm -hmm. the community to really turn that around. It's it just put it in your brain. If you're going to do this yourself, which is the whole onus of this, if you're going to podcast or create content yourself, you're going to double the amount of time that you have to do it in, unless you outsource it. Here may be one of the more important points about long-term marketing and where I see it fail a lot is, and I, and I see this with radio because people, if people understand that radio is going to take years and they say, you know, what, I'm going to commit to it. And they had some good people teach, teach them. Sometimes what I see happening is there's this propensity to say, well, it's going to take years. So I better work hard to sell people right now. And that's absolutely the worst tactic to take. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh man, brother. It's like, I don't have, my, I gotta, I gotta speed up this, the path to success and, and, and turning this into a, a pipeline generator. So I'm just going to put more pressure. I'm going to talk about selling people more. I'm going to talk about call to actions more often. And the truth is, is that where Matt and I have really tried not to do that most of the time is you still want to talk about it, give those options, because if somebody's really interested in the moment, you want to make sure they understand that you're interested in talking to them. But if if we showed up and talked about selling podcasting or we're selling marketing all the time and we didn't educate you guys, do we have all of our points that we're going to list and give you all kinds of resources and tools and ideas and new thoughts and mindsets and, and partners and bring in on this podcast, we've had 250 different guests mm -hmm. who do, who have ex expertise and things that are sometimes crossover with what we're doing sometimes are a bit redundant and sometimes are completely different, new and interesting. And occasionally, maybe not the best fit for our podcast, but we're learning. That's a huge part of, of long-term success is do, putting the work in. Think of, if you're, of your audience. What do they want to hear you talk about? Any final thoughts, Mr. Halloran? I'm being serious when I, when I say Mr. Halloran. You better come up with something great. Yeah, I'm in trouble now. Well, I just wanted to talk about the perfect podcast formula. We're going to end this on the perfect podcast formula, which is every time you're creating content, it's a, we just call it the perfect podcast formula. It's a perfect content creation formula. It's education, entertainment, storytelling, and then call to action. So I think it would be remiss, Mr. Lowe, if we didn't have a very specific call to action at the end of this show. What should our call to action be? I think it's listen to more podcasts. Yeah. If you think this is right for you and you don't want to push it off any longer, go to our website, proudmouth.com, click on the contact us. And that note actually cues, tees up our, our team to get you on a call with Matt. Mm -hmm. Ask the hard questions, like really hard questions, like Matt can handle it. He just had a huge coffee this morning, so he's ready to go. <laughs> Matt, by the way, his coffee mug, it's not really a coffee mug. I think what he does is he just pulls the canister right out from the from the coffee maker and starts <laughs> drinking right out of there. <laughs> Throw a little sugar, a little. Yeah. You're a cream and sugar? I can't remember. You no, I'm just, I'm a lot of sugar guy, dude. Come on, you know that. You used to give me crap well, about I, all the I, candy. I was pretty sure everything. sugar, but I couldn't remember <laughs> if it's cream or milk. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to. No, it's going to be black and it's going to be ridiculously sweet that's it it is it, okay it look, sounds like this podcast yeah. is about to come to an end everybody <laughs> we don't want anybody falling asleep at the wheel or while you're commuting you don't want to miss your stop or if you're walking the dog anyway we hope everybody is enjoying life thanks for listening to our podcast we so appreciate it we're here for you guys appreciate you see you on the other side of the mic real soon thanks for listening to the top advisor marketing podcast brought to you by proud mouth if you want to know more about how you can be your own loud, visit us at proudmouth.com and sign up for the Pod Rocket Academy. Through courses and office hours led by professional podcast producers and digital marketers, you will learn everything you need to know to become the trusted subject matter expert you were meant to be.